a lot of questions from women. Um, weight loss, uh, skin quality, insulin resistance. Are there peptides? One of my concerns about peptides today, and I see this all the time on Facebook, is people will say, what's a great peptide to help me lose 30 pounds? And are we are we com- demanding too much of peptides? I'll, I'll start with you, Dr. Earth. What do you think? So first of all, I'm going to hit on one of Suzanne and Erica and I's pet peeves. And that is the number of women who come to us saying, I just want to be skinny. I just want to lose weight. As opposed to the number of women who come into our practices saying, I want to be ripped and muscular and really fit and, and really in shape and really healthy. Um, and so it's kind of one of our pet peeves that we discuss a lot, both amongst ourselves, but also when we're doing podcasts. We, the three of us, get together a lot. And, and it's, it's sort of one of our big pet peeves is the number of women who come into our practices with, I, I have to lose weight, I have to lose weight, I have to lose weight. And we really are trying to switch that mindset a little bit to, hey, I really want to be fit and muscular because, you know, one out of every 50 women come into my practice saying, how do I get more fit and muscular than come in and say, I want to be skinny and, you know, and lose 30 pounds. So that's I'm going to kind of preface with let's start there. Is it unrealistic to want to lose 30 pounds? No. Is it what your goal should be? No. And and actually. It's only you never hear a man say after stepping on a scale, I'm never going to eat again. (laughs) But I bet you every woman has said that at some point in her life. The relationship between gravity and your body has nothing to do with your level of health and conditioning. And really, health and conditioning should be what the focus is. Would you agree with that, Dr. Turner? Absolutely. It's interesting. When I started, so I used to be a runner and I got injured and that's the reason why I started weight training. Uh, and the it's when I was a runner, every time I would look in the, I mean, I'm a woman too. When, when I was look, would look in the mirror, I would go, ugh, you know, I've got this thing and this other thing that I don't like and this other thing. Now I look in the mirror and I flex. <laughs> <laughs> and I go like, look at that, look at that lat. Who has a lat like that? <laughs> it's fun. I know I love it. it's amazing. And 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 Dr. Schwartz, how much of the responsibility for this attitude in women in the general public um, it can be laid at the feet of the mainstream media and people like Gwen Paltrow, who you know tell, oh, don't ever lift more than a two pound dumbbell. It, it, is it, isn't the wrong information out there pretty much widespread today? Beyond the problem is we have a culture that is still a dinosaurish culture that doesn't realize that youthfulness and health and longevity are really tied into people who have muscles, not people who are skinny, but rather we have the realization that muscles are the most important organ at keeping us young and how we move and how much muscle mass we have. And I'm not talking about, you know, big, Right. You know, bodybuilder, but rather having the uh, the right muscle mass. What it brings us to is youthfulness and prevents chronic illnesses. And there's so much problem out there with the culture. And you're right. I don't even want to say that name because I don't want to give airtime to anybody who <laughs> helps women be victims and be skinny and be wallflowers and be sick. So I don't, I'm totally with you. It's a cultural thing and we need to eliminate it. It's totally eliminated if we want women to be active participants and equals in our society. 